The Sunbury Line is a 40 mile per hour, 135 mile long single track main line running between Binghamton, New York and Sunbury, Pennsylvania. It runs through seven Pennsylvania counties, one New York State County, and has numerous grades, six signaled sightings, and two handline sightings. There are numerous online industries served by various locals seven days a week and include just about every commodity from general freight to intermodal. And in addition to the day-to-day -day freights, occasional extras, reroutes, unit trains, work trains, oddballs and specials are operated with much more potential for future growth and development. Most important, at a time when so many railroads are decreasing their physical infrastructure, Norfolk Southern paid a premium price to acquire the blue and gray. Railroading in the post-World War II years has always been a difficult business, and even more so today. Interstate trucks compete with the railroad at every turn for what's often very meager traffic pickings. And the fact that no one railroad can reach every point in America, rail freight transport is at a very clear disadvantage to trucks. Add to that, there's a need for the individual railroads to work together, hence the mega mergers, takeovers, and consolidations of recent decades. However, through all of this, today's Sunbury Line has weathered the challenges to become a vital link in the American transportation network. If you're at all familiar with this channel, it would be easy to think that the Sunbury Line was the center of American railroading. Well, not exactly, but it is an important artery slicing through the heart of Pennsylvania and probably the single biggest financial investment made by the Norfolk Southern since the Conrail buyout of 1999. Today's Delaware and Hudson Lines is a third, fourth, and maybe even a fifth chance for a line with a world of potential in a world of railroads that had little interest in it. The Delaware and Hudson in the post-World War II era was a railroad that had been owned and or controlled by Norfolk Southern's predecessor, the Norfolk and Western, through one of its own subsidiaries, Direco, Guilford Transportation Industries, known today as Pan Am Railways, the New York Susquehanna and Western, and the Canadian Pacific since 1990. When NS bought the line in 2015, several things took place simultaneously. On the grand scale, which is North American railroading, it was simply the bringing of ownership of a long embattled railroad line into the corporate family of the railroad that was its majority user. From a rail fan's point of view, it was a very real opportunity for a phoenix to rise from the ashes. Not only from the ruins of the Penn Central bankruptcy, but also from the stranglehold of PC's successor, Conrail, and its monopoly on the Northeastern rail freight market after its creation. And even though the D&H doubled in size as a result of the Conrail merger, it didn't take long for Big Blue's dominance to inflict irrevocable damage to the little Delaware and Hudson. Casting another light, the NS purchase of the D&H lines was a deal that paved the way for bringing true competition to the New England rail freight market, something not seen since the 1960s. In the past, there were three main east to west rail routes into New England, the New Haven Maybrook Line, the New York Central Boston and Albany Line, and the Boston and Maine Hoosac Tunnel Route. In 1974, a mysterious fire that was never explained destroyed the Poughkeepsie River Bridge which permanently severed the Maybrook Line. This left the Boston and Albany and the Boston and Maine. The Boston and Albany and Boston and Maine parallel each other east to west from Boston to Rotterdam Junction, New York, and both lines had advantages and disadvantages. And though the Poughkeepsie River Bridge disaster left only two east to west routes into New England, there were still three main players in the New England rail freight business, the Central Vermont, the Boston and Albany, then under Conrail, and the Boston and Maine, and the three roads had an intense rivalry that went back more than 150 years. In the 20th century, railroads for the most part moved products and goods out of New England. But now, especially considering that Boston's port is not fit for big container ships, they're looking for the freight moving into New England. Looking to break into the lucrative New England market which CSX held a virtual monopoly over, ironically just like its predecessors, Norfolk Southern bought a 50% stake of the Hoosac line from the connection with the Delaware and Hudson at Mechanicville, New York to the intermodal terminal at Ayer, Massachusetts in a joint venture known today as Pan Am Southern. Operationally for NS, the D&H lines neatly and seamlessly connected four loose ends in its northeastern network. 
It's Pan Am Southern in New England. It's Southern Tier Line in Binghamton, which is also its main line to Buffalo and Chicago. The switch at DuPont Junction below Scranton, Pennsylvania, which connects to the Reading and Northern Lehigh Line and Norfolk Southern's own Lehigh Line to Allentown Yard and North Jersey, and lastly to the Buffalo Line and specifically Northumberland, Sunbury, and its Harrisburg hub including Enola. While the Sunbury Line is not the busiest rail line in America, it offers the rail fan a unique railroading experience with a variety of freight traffic, locomotive power, and best of all, operating searchlight signals. These things are getting harder and harder to come by as unit intermodal trains, locomotive standardization, and PTC mandates take hold in the industry. We start our tour of the Sunbury Line in Binghamton, New York. On average, Binghamton sees 15 to 25 trains a day, but despite the fact that Bingo Town is certainly a rail hub, it's not a rail fanning hotspot. Perhaps the biggest problem with B-Town is that despite the impressive tally of trains in a 24-hour period, there can be lulls. Big lulls. And the fact that there are only a handful of places to get really good shots of trains, a trip to Bingo Town more often than not can be disappointing to the uninitiated rail fan. The best place by far to watch trains in Bingo Town is at the old D&H freight station located along the Bevere Street Yard. It's fairly easy to access and best of all, there's the Shenango Street overpass that provides shelter from the sun, the rain, and the snow. From here you can see trains of Norfolk Southern entering and exiting the Southern Tier and the freight line plus you can see trains bound for Buffalo and Albany coming out of the Binghamton Yard. As an added bonus, you can also catch much of the switching activity by the Susquehanna, including their engine terminal operations. Before the merger craze that began in the 1950s, Binghamton was served by no less than four different railroads, the Lackawanna, the Erie, the Susquehanna, and the Delaware and Hudson. At the junction known today as BD is where they all converged. Before the Norfolk Southern bought the Sunbury Line, Binghamton was the end of NS's world. Now it's the Northeastern and New England Rail Hub. From Bingo Town, NS can go north to Syracuse, New York by way of their 40% stake of the Susquehanna Short Line, northeast to Albany, New York by way of their ex dnh Freight Line, west to Buffalo, New York by way of the ex erie Railroad Southern Tier Route, and south to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania by way of the Sunbury Line and the connecting Buffalo Line at Sunbury in Northumberland. Looking north from the diamond, the tracks on the left are the ex Lackawanna tracks that feed into the Binghamton Yard and the Southern Tier Line, which is where this coal train came off of. The tracks on the right are the ex Erie Railroad tracks leading into the Bevere Street Yard. That track cutting across at an angle is the Sunbury Line into the Binghamton Yard and also the old DNH Yard, which goes on to Albany, New York. BD is officially where the Sunbury Line starts, and looking south from the diamond takes you along the ex Erie tracks, now served by the New York, Susquehanna, and Western, and operated as the Central New York to Litter Ferry, New Jersey. This particular scene was recorded in late 2015, and those double stacked cars sitting there are waiting for the westbound intermodal train number 205 to Chicago to pick them up later that day. The containers came out of Taylor, Pennsylvania, and as it was in 2015, the 205 would stop on the DNH yard, uncouple from its train, and the light engines would pick up the containers for the trip back to Chicago. And while I don't know this for certain, I believe that today these containers may move to Buffalo by way of the NS37T in a connection with another train on to Chicago from there. Whatever the case, the track itself leads across the Susquehanna River and into the Binghamton yard located in Conklin, New York. When the NS took over the line, they inherited the ex-Canadian Pacific car shops and engine servicing facilities there. The weeds in this scene, also taken in 2015, show the neglect that the yard and the line had endured during the days leading up to the changeover from CP to NS.
Now in the state of Pennsylvania, the new Milford siding is one of two relatively new sidings on the Sunbury Line installed by the Canadian Pacific at some time in the last decade. From a rail fan's perspective, the approximate 8,000 foot siding is typically used as a holdout for northbound trains waiting to enter the Binghamton Yard, just like this train is doing. The main spotting difference at the control points on either end are the modern day aluminum signal masts with the ever ending endearing searchlights firmly perched upon them. The new Milford siding is the only place on the Sunbury line except maybe for Hanover that have these types of signal masts. Moving down the line and into the Endless Mountains region, Kingsley is best known for the Kingsley Viaduct aka the Martins Creek Viaduct. This arched concrete bridge is a smaller cousin of the famous Tunkhannock Creek Viaduct about seven miles to the south. The next siding we come to is at the little town of Hopbottom, formerly known as Foster's. The north end is easily accessible but rail fan with caution. Train speeds here are 40 miles per hour and when not tied down or holding for other trains, they're doing every single bit of that 40 miles per hour. Milepost 652 on the Sunbury Line is the north end of the world famous Tunkhannock Creek Viaduct, the largest bridge of its kind in the world. The viaduct still bears the name of the railroad that constructed it more than 100 years ago. The Agway at La Plume was once a station stop on the Lackawanna Railroad. Today, its residents are tolerant and friendly to rail fans, and it's a nice place to catch northbound trains flying down the grade from Clark Summit, or southbound trains working hard trying to reach the grade at Clark Summit. The 10 mile climb from Taylor to Clark Summit is an operational problem for NS and our biggest headache on this line. If you're familiar with this channel then I don't have to explain it any further.
Although not commonly mentioned in rail fan conversation, located near here are the town of Chinchilla, Leggett's Gap, and the Cayuga Junction. At Chinchilla, the old New York, Ontario and Western Cayuga Junction branch went under the main line at Kaiser Avenue. The tunnel bore is still there to this day. At Cayuga Junction, the old Lackawanna Kaiser Valley branch connected to the main line about a mile up from here. That connection was severed long ago, and what's left of the Kaiser Valley branch is today operated by the Reading and Northern train that comes through Taylor Yard six days a week. The two-mile stretch between milepost HA-670 and HA-672 is the heaviest travel portion of the line with rails taking a never-ending pounding on a daily basis. The Delaware and Hudson is a north-to-south railroad in a predominantly east-to-west world, so rail fanning it is also an east-to-west game of sun chasing throughout the day. During the days when sunlight is prevalent, the east side of the tracks is usually the ideal place to be for catching morning trains like the 37T. For me though, the temptation was too irresistible on this day and so I decided to shoot on the shadow side of the tracks. The serpentine bend of the line is so that double stack containers can clear the overhead passes of Linden Street and that bridge pipeline.
Scranton, Pennsylvania is the county seat of Lackawanna and the main point of interest on the Sunbury Line. And although our focus for this video is the Old Delaware and Hudson, no trip through the Scranton area would be complete without at least a cameo look at two of its biggest rail fan attractions. Subscribers of this channel will know this spot at first instant. This is the Steamtown Y and where I do most of my local rail fanning. This small area provides it all. Ground level shots, aerial shots, panoramic views of the city, the Delaware Lackawanna short line and the Lackawanna Street overpass that provide shade in the summer and shelter from the rain and the snow. Although Scranton is probably the best place to do your Sunbury Line rail fanning, the nerve center of operations of the line are two miles south in the suburban town of Taylor. Taylor stretches from control point 672 to control point 673 and is primarily an intermodal yard but also does freight classification for not only Norfolk Southern but also for the Reading and Northern and the Delaware Lackawanna short line.
The nice thing about Taylor is that you get a three-for-one deal when rail fanning. At the north end is where you can catch the Delaware Lackawanna doing its business, and at the south end is where you'll find the Redding and Northern working the yard and or its Kaiser Valley branch, the one we talked about further up the line. With several rail served industries located in and around the yard, and with mainline and shortline locals working in and out of Taylor seven days a week, Taylor Yard is the quintessential rail fan destination for those wishing to guarantee something railroading in the area. And in addition to the various switching activities you'll find at Taylor, you'll also find one of its six signal sidings, which is a great place to catch train meets. The Reading and Northern train that you see here has finished its duties for the day and is returning to its own yard in Pittston. The track that it's on is the number 17 track which although it's part of the Taylor Yard owned and operated by NS is the Reading and Northern's through track from its own line from Pittston and its Kaiser Valley Industrial Branch. Yep, that's the same track that we talked about back up there on the hill. Further down the line from the Scranton area, the Sunbury Line passes through many small towns like Music and Avoca. 
now firmly in Luzerne County, we come to an important junction on the line, DuPont Junction. Control Point DuPont Junction is where the Norfolk Southern branches off to connect with the Reading and Northern's Lehigh Line. The Lehigh Line is the former Lehigh Valley Mountain Cutoff from Pittston that came under Reading and Northern ownership when Conrail spun it off back in the 1990s. Going south on the Lehigh Line, NS connects with its own Lehigh Line at m &H Junction in a town called Jim Thorpe. From Jim Thorpe, the NS moves on to its own trackage through Lehighton and Packerton Yard and down to its massive Allentown Yard in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Norfolk Southern traffic on the Reading and Northern Lehigh Line is currently relegated to the 36T and 37T trains daily with the occasional extra freight. But plans are in the works so that the future could see NS Intermodal trains to and from the Port of Philadelphia running over this line. By now, you may be all too familiar with the uphill drama from Taylor to Clark Summit, but there's actually another grade on the Sunbury Line that's also notorious for pulled drawbars, pop knuckles, and stalled trains the Yatesville Hill. Shorter but just as steep, Yatesville is the northbound warm-up to the climb to Clark Summit. Adjacent to the line is one of the handline sidings that is used to service the small Valley Industrial Park.
At one time, dozens of coal mines and breakers dotted the northeastern PA landscape, and nowhere is that more evident today than the tiny little hamlet of Ingraman. Although remnants of the coal mining heritage of the region are getting harder and harder to come by, places like Inkerman still exhibit the old-time feel of the way things used to be. Right down to the jointed mainline rail. Yes, this too is the Sunbury Line. For now, anyway, welded rail will be installed soon, probably in 2018. Another important junction is at Hudson, Pennsylvania, located at milepost 686 on the Sunbury Line. Hudson is where the old Delaware and Hudson Yard once stood. In its heyday, the Delaware and Hudson had a massive operation here that stretched all the way south into downtown Wilkesbury. Today, not much remains of those glory days, however, the short line Luzerne and Susquehanna does interchange with the NS here and seven miles south in Buttonwood. In fact, those ginormous cryogenic heat exchangers that used to come out of the air products facility in Wilkesbury were handed off to the NS here and the Canadian Pacific before the takeover. Also, occasionally, the LNS will even run on the Sunbury Line north to Avoca to service the Petrogas propane facility there. And as for those CSX units, that's the last circus train to come through town in 2017, which also picked up the second half of its train here as well. Crossing the Susquehanna River from Wilkesbury to Kingston, the train is traveling over an unusual piece of the line. This is the seven mile Wilkesbury Connecting Railroad a segment that connected the Delaware and Hudson and the Pennsylvania Railroad. At one time, the coal and other rail traffic in and around the region was so strong, so intense, that it was deemed necessary to construct a seven-mile bypass around Wilkesbury for through freight traffic. At the north end of the Wilkesbury Connecting Railroad was the Delaware and Hudson's Hudson Yard, and at the south end was the Pennsylvania Railroad's Buttonwood Yard. Both railroads did a brisk business with each other on this line right up to and throughout the dark days of the Penn Central bankruptcy. When Conrail was formed in 1976, the Delaware and Hudson gained complete ownership of the Wilkes-Barre Connecting Railroad from Hudson to Buttonwood as well as the Pennsylvania Railroad operated a portion of the line all the way to Sunbury. From Sunbury, the D&H used the then Conrail Buffalo Line into Enola and even further south to Washington, D.C. That's when the old Potomac Rail Yard was still in operation. For years, Buttonwood was my rail fanning stomping ground as well as the manufacturing home of air products in Wilkes-Barre. The LNS has another interchange with NS here and there was another industrial siding that serviced the original American rock salt deposit in Northeast PA as well as the DMS metal shredder. The shredder remains to this day, albeit with no rail service, and American rock salt moved north to Scranton at the north end of Taylor Yard.
South of Nanticoke, the line opens up and trains can really stretch out. This is highball territory. That's about 40 miles per hour to you and me. The line goes south through Nanticoke, Makanakwa, and Wapwallapin. Can you hear the Native American heritage in those names? The last signal sighting we come to is the Nescapec sighting located between Control Point 714 and Control Point 716. In Pensy days, Nescapec was also the location of the small Nescapec yard, torn out decades ago. Train 052 is an oddity on the Sunbury Line. It's an empty military train that comes south out of New York State. The CSX power that these trains always have makes me think that they come from Fort Drum up near the Canadian border. Moving south out of Nescapec, trains pass through Mifflinville, East Bloomsburg, Catawissa, and Riverside before reaching the line's namesake town of Sunbury, Northumberland, and the connection with the Buffalo Line at Control Point Case.
Enola-bound trains like the 11Z will continue south through Herndon, Millersburg, and Halifax before reaching the Harrisburg area. For our purpose, this marks the end of our tour. For trains like the 11A, crossing Shikalami Avenue here, the journey north to Binghamton is just beginning. The Sunbury Line has seen many changes since its days as the Pennsylvania Railroad's Wilkesbury branch and the main line of the Delaware, Lackawanna, and Western. Through the Penn Central, Conrail, the Delaware and Hudson, Guilford, Susquehanna, the Canadian Pacific, and now the Norfolk Southern, the line has solidified itself as a small but strategic rail artery that makes up an important regional piece of a national transportation network.